Allard did everything that you asked him to. Did not turn the football over. Anytime you see, like, okay, I think he missed one. There was one er errant throw, more or less, to Amari Evans behind him. Evans didn't catch it. It was an, an incompletion. Drew Aller's very selective with his passes. If you think, oh, Drew Aller's just, he, he just chucked that one away. He's inaccurate. He, uh, Garrett Green's inaccurate. <laughs> Everybody saw that game. 53 completion percentage uh, from a season ago. That there, there's a reason for that. But Drew Aller, when he makes those mistakes and you're like, what was that throw? You're quite, you're questioning it. Drew Aller is in a sense throwing it away. He's making an inaccurate pass to a point where, hey, if my receiver can make a play on this, he can get it. I'm he so Drew Aller is going from the mindset of I will put this football where only my receiver can get it. The odds are still low that he does end up catching it, but only my receiver can get to it. I am keeping it away from the linebacker, the defensive back. I think Drew had one or two throws where it, it was like, okay, the ball was in harm's way. That could have been intercepted, uh, or it, it was behind Amari Evans, and that was just hey, it, it inaccuracies happen. He's not perfect. But he's a very good quarterback, and I think he can be the number one overall pick. And then you see that dual threat element of his game. I was not kidding. When I said that all on the show for months, Aller's going to run more. You're going to see a different version of Drew Aller where there's going to be read option plays. He's going to run uh, triple option plays where it's a fake to one half back and then rolls out, and he's either going to keep it or he's going to pitch the football, and he's just going to be tougher to bring down. He already had good pocket mobility. And then losing that weight just allows him to be a little more nimble. You saw it. West Virginia was chasing him. That's a six foot five, two hundred thirty five pound quarterback, and they were just they were chasing him. He was dancing around and was able to extend the play, allow receivers to break away from coverage. That's what losing seven pounds can do for you. It adds three, four, five seconds to an offensive play to generate a completion. And Aller doesn't get rattled when there's pressure in his. I thought I thought he handled it. West Virginia brought pressure, handled it very well. Let's I, I also want to talk about Bo Prebule in this conversation. So Aller's the one quarterback. Andy Kotelnicki was was not afraid to bring his full system over and make that two quarterback system. Bo Prebula, I, I don't think had the best game in the world. You know, almost uh, had a fumble. His his shin ended up being down. Uh, in the in the replay and it could have been it was a 50 50 it could have been overturned it could have and it, it's a good it would have swung momentum so fortunate for Penn State that they kept the football there but that is also a work in progress on its own how to use those plays timely how to use them effectively how to get Bo Prabula in the best situations and he wasn't utilized a lot last year so it's one thing to do it in practice and to say that oh Bo can do it but will he be able to do it that's the offense, I'm surprised they even showed that in this game. And then we talked to, to Steve to get that insider look. And it's like, he's like, you're going to see all of it. I thought it was going to be progressively worked in, you know, okay. So you'll see Drew Aller up front. You'll see some more read option, triple option types of plays, but maybe they'll save the bow, Prebula wildcat package for later. Andy Kotelnicki basically rolled out a lot, a lot of what they're, what is going to be the bread and butter of this season. Did he show the entire hand? Did he show the entire playbook? Absolutely not. We got a very limited version, but we got basically a small sample size of everything. We didn't just get one intensive part of the playbook. We got a little bit of everything, but not but not everything is my point there. So Bo I mean, hey, you know it's a dominant victory when both your quarterbacks throw a touchdown pass. Both of your running backs get a touchdown. Nicholas Singleton had the big rushing touchdown, and Catron Allen had the receiving touchdown. And Tyler Warren gets involved. Trey Wallace had two touchdowns. Right, right. I, I mean, that's that's what domination looks like when both of your quarterbacks get a touchdown pass. Both your running backs, your starting running backs, get uh, a touchdown in the game, and then you're able to distribute the football to everybody. Going to the running backs. Liked what I saw out of Nicholas Singleton. Uh, Katron Allen, uh, not the best day for him. 10 carries, 20 yards, uh, but effective in the passing game. Effective in the passing game. Had that, uh, took a, a simple dump off pass, took the check down and took it 20 yards for a touchdown. That's what I meant. The running backs are going to be utilized more in the passing game as well. It wasn't as intense because Penn State didn't need to open up the passing attack. But... Penn State was able to, to again, work with what West Virginia was giving them. 
And I haven't really brought up West Virginia a lot in this conversation because they really they really disappointed in this game. Defensively, they were offensively too, but defensively, they went at it from the mindset of we are going to try to shut down the run. And that did not work for the second year in a row. And I understand that. Nicholas Singleton and Catron Allen are guys that you want to emphasize in your game plan. I understand that when you're an opposing defense. But you allowed Drew Aller for the second year in a row to just torture secondary parts. So that's Penn State was able to capitalize on the mistakes, coaching schematic mistakes of West Virginia as well. Penn State was able to execute, but West Virginia gave them a lot of easy opportunities to move up and down the field with those explosive plays. So that's that's why I started off the show the way I did, is that Penn State's not exactly in that elite category yet because West Virginia still has a good amount of shortcomings, whereas Penn State is a college football playoff team inside of the top 10 and hopefully closer to that top four than the than the bottom four there. I think I think they host a playoff game. I, I truly do. But West Virginia, I, I really don't know that Neil Brown and the rest of that 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 staff are are and and West Virginia people who cover West Virginia pivoted pretty quickly on how they felt about this team going into the rest of the season. I don't think you're playing a a, a top ten team, an elite an elite from the standpoint of they are one of the best in the country. They're in that top ten conversation. But West Virginia, I to to totally sell out here i just i just think there's kind of levels to it and everything but penn state capitalized on what west west virginia couldn't take anything away because of how talented penn state was and how well coached they were overall and they just capitalized on the mistakes that west virginia gave them again selling out for the run and just leaving defensive backs on i they just didn't help them out they didn't do anything to help that secondary out and that's why drew aller and trey wallace and amari evans had as much success as they did in the passing game today so on the wide receivers and the tight ends, Trey Wallace is your clear cut number one. Five receptions, 117 yards, two touchdowns. Amari Evans gave you that big play ability. I think he will absolutely average. I, I was talking to a Dylan from Penn State Rivals. Some of you may remember him as a guest on this show. And I was talking to him the other day, and he said, I don't know if Evans would be a, a player that would average over 20 yards per catch. And I said, absolutely. I, absolutely he would because he is that home run threat. I look around the wide receiver room and, and Trey Wallace is your number one, do everything all around wide receiver, but a Julian Fleming, a Caden Saunders, or a Liam Clifford, guys who were, were not involved, period. They were on the football field, but they didn't get involved in the game today, and that's fine. You didn't need them to, but they're possession receivers. They're short to medium distance receivers. They can't take a top off the defense. Amari Evans, and, and to an extent, Trey Wallace. Trey Wallace, can as, as you saw today with two touchdowns but amari evans is your is your speed home run threat if penn state wants to make this offense from good to great to elite they need to unlock the potential of amari evans amari evans is the x factor he is the key to taking this offense to a whole nother level i mean i mean that that's a lot of responsibility on one player who is in the third year uh with this program but that's what Evans can do for you. And he has abilities that not a lot of other players on this offense have. He's one of the three fastest players overall on this team. And I think he will absolutely average over 20 plus yards per catch because he is going to be your home run threat. And frankly, at the moment, he's your only one. So Amari Evans is a lot more valuable than people are giving him credit for within this offense. Finish up with the offensive line before we take another break and go to the defense. Penn State's offensive line impressed me, but I've been very critical of West Virginia's front seven. And again, schematically, they blitzed, but they didn't really get home. I mean, Aller was able to dance out of some, you know, some pressure here and there, but there wasn't a lot. It's not like West Virginia was in was in Drew Aller's face mask every single play. West Virginia just didn't offer a, a lot of pressure in that, you know, again, holds back the secondary because they can only cover for so long. It, it, it's it's a yin and yang. It's consequential, you know, right down the down the, the, the chain of command there. If your front seven isn't going to be able to do its job, and I, I don't care that West Virginia led the Big 12 in sacks. West Virginia, when you look at pro football focuses, analytics from a season ago was a bottom 20 group in terms of getting 
effective pass rushes. So eventually, so the secondary last season actually would bail out West Virginia's defensive line quite a bit because they would hold coverage and they did that against, frankly, weaker competition. Cincinnati was a pretty rough team, a UCF, a Baylor, just to kind of name a few. I don't need to get into West Virginia and how they match up with other Big 12 teams. But my point is that the offensive line looked good. I still have my questions about them. I think that there's obviously room for improvement. Because they struggled in the ground game a little bit. Again, West Virginia's front seven, uh, other than Nicholas Singleton breaking off that big run, they did. They held Catron Allen in check. It's not like Penn State had this dominant day on the ground. They did well. They did. They did enough to get the job done, but they didn't dominate there. They dominated other places. They didn't dominate there. And the offensive line, I think, needs to establish that. I think they need to get you know a little tougher up front initially. And, and again, West Virginia sold out for the run, so that's understandable. Pass blocking, I think, gets a B plus. I think they did very well. I, th I think they shattered expectations there, but part of that has to do with the matchup. West Virginia's defensive line is not is not that good when it comes to getting after the quarterback and the analytics back that up. And you saw it; they did not pass the they passed the eye test in that category of yeah the the num the numbers don't lie. And you saw it today as well. So I need a tougher test for the offensive line. And you're not going to get that for some time. It's not going to be there against a Bowling Green, a Kent State. Probably not in Illinois either. Illinois lost a lot from, from its front seven. We'll see as we go, as we dive deeper into Illinois when that game rolls around. But I, I don't, I don't and, and then there's UCLA. I, I don't know and if Penn State's offensive line is really going to get that, that true barometer litmus test where it, it, until it's USC. And that's not the game that you want because that's your turning point in the season. That's the heart. That's the beginning of the heart of your schedule. So we'll see. Offensive line did its job today. Very impressed for what it's worth. But I need I need a tougher test for them to to be more confident.